Watch a movie, get inspired, give back, help a charity. It's time for a movie karma watch party. Hi everybody, I'm Jared Milrad. Welcome to another Movie Karma Watch Party. Uh, really excited to have uh, today's special guest, Tim Webster, who's joining us all from the UK, all the way from the UK. Uh, Tim, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. We, you're absolutely happy to have you. Uh, we just recognized Tim's film, Until the Last Drop, uh, which we're really excited to screen today. Uh, we'll do a screening of the film, which is about 20 minutes, and then in the back end, we'll do a Q&A with Tim here. Here are lots of, uh, hopefully, tidbits and insight about how he made it, why he made it, and why, why it matters. Um, so why don't we dive in to the screening, and then we'll uh, do some questions on, on the back end. Did you get questions from the Israeli government? Were, were there, or the Palestinian authority, like were there suspicions about why you were there? Did you get any of that? It's, it's so weird because normally when you go filming in, the, in, uh, in uh, countries outside of Europe, certainly, like you have to get permission to enter the country mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, get all of these permissions to start with. With Israel, it's really weird. You, you, you can arrive with bags and bags of film stuff. And they don't question you when you go in. Mm -hmm. But when you come out, oh my word, like, it's insane. You, we were stopped um, on the route to the airport, in the airport maybe three or four times, like, long, long period of questioning for maybe an hour, like with different checks, different types of security checks. Like, it was quite intense. And it's not just because I was filming. Everybody, well, they single people out, suspicious people. Why are you right. here? What were you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Right. And so they just asked, and so were they, were they concerned at all about the film itself? Like, did they demand to see footage, or was it just more that you were there? Do you know what? I was really honest. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, you're just a human being who's asking you questions. I was like, look, you know, I was making a film to show the two realities. Yeah. Um, the guy who was asking me questions, you know, he was, he seemed to be nice. Uh, he seemed to be understanding whether he was trained to do that, to extract more information. I don't know. But like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pretend, you know, I, I felt like I wasn't trying to, um, um, show something that was incorrect. I felt like I was there for a legitimate reason. I was there to show the two realities. Um, yeah, yeah. it turned out I, you know, I really got on with Ellie, actually the Israeli, I, I understood, you know, his whole family had died in the, um, you know, in, in the Second World War. Uh, yeah. he, he came with nothing. So I did, I did see it from his perspective as well, which I was surprised about. I thought I would come away really hating, um, yeah. you know, settlers. I, I didn't. Not yeah, I was wondering if you could talk more about that, Tim. I mean, I, uh, yeah, as a Jewish American, like I, I did birthright Israel, you know, which is a whole other can of worms in conversation, uh, like, I guess, 10 yeah. years ago. Um, and went in with pretty open eyes, having fr having friends who were Pakistani American, who were who were Palestinian, etc. Um, so I so I hear what you're saying, just like going there, what your perspective might be, coming out, what it might be, the questioning that you get. Um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about that. Like, did you feel like your perspectives on Israel or on the conflict or on even the water issues did that shift, um, going versus coming? I think like um, on the on the issues and the policies, like it's definitely woken me up to the reality of what Israel does. I, I think it's astonishing that they get away with what they do. And I think it's astonishing that certainly it, like American and European governments are completely complicit in it. That astonishes me, actually. Um, in terms of the people on the ground, like we talk about lockdown. I mean, these guys, Israelis and Palestinians are in a continual lockdown. Neither side is winning. Like you go there, like the, the only place people meet is on the road. It's mm. mad. Like I had no idea that I thought there would just be a big fence. And it was like, it's not like that. Like there's signs for Palestinians, there's signs for Israelis. Israelis can't go in the Palestinian bit. Palestinians can't go in the Israeli. Nobody's winning. The people on the ground are not winning. Like Israelis would tell me, we want a solution to this. Palestinians would say we want a solution to this. But the two sides can't meet. It's, I, I don't fully understand the politics of it, but, uh, and the intricacies of, 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 of why the, the, the right wing element of, um, 
Israeli society do what they do, but um, for the majority of the people on the ground, they just they want a solution. They don't want the the, the situation that they're in. So that yeah, that that really opened my eyes. And um, yeah, I think on the issue of water, I think it's it's actually unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable what Israel does when you see how they rechannel the Palestinian wells to feed Israeli settlements. It's you just can't. It's, it's, it's actually unbelievable that they would deprive a whole population of water um, in that way. Yeah, and it was really powerful just how visually you were able to capture that. And, and so, you know, Hey everybody, I'm Jared Milrad, the founder of Movie Karma. Thanks so much for stopping by our page. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with your friends and family so we can continue to transform entertainment into action.